York. We are ordering you to land immediately. <laughs> All right. Let's land. I repeat, we are ordering you to land immediately. Is your yard? Well, that's for the damage. And uh, here's a little something extra for your sister. Hey, little darling. And your bike. You never saw me. This is Michael Faulkner, and it is showtime at the September 26th, 2017 edition of the Weekly Potty Uplex. Brought to you on the Chronicriff Network. This week's birthdays include actor and singer Will Smith, screen legend Catherine Zeta-Jones, Donald Glover, the new Lando Calrissian, Jedi Master Mark Hamill, physical singer and Grease's Sandy Olivia Newton-John, Marvel's Pepper Potts Gwyneth Paltrow, Tamara Taylor from Bones, Naomi Watts from The Ring, Zachary Levi from Chuck, The New Movie Flash, Ezra Miller, Monica Bellucci from The Matrix Sequels and Spectre, and Lacey Chabert from Mean Girls, and I'm going to say it, Lost in Space. Starting with the box office report, The Kingsmen beat The Clown. At number 10 is Wind River, down 4 from 6th. At number 9 is The Hitman's Bodyguard, down 4 from 5th. At 8th is new release Stronger, premiering in limited release to $1.6 million. The film performed best in Boston, which matches well with the subject matter. Audiences gave it an A-, and critics gave it a 95% positive reception. In 7th is new release Friend Request, earning $2 million. That's well below the $10 million expectations, and that matches well with the C-plus cinema score and the 18% critical reception. Finishing out this week's bottom five is Home Again, down two from four. The top five this week begin with Mother, adding $3.2 million to a total of $22.3 million. In fourth place is American Assassin, down two from second with $6.3 million added to a total of $26.2 million. In third place is new release The Lego Ninjago Movie, premiering to $20.4 million. That's around $10 million below expectations, and it marks the lowest opening for a LEGO film. Much like the LEGO Batman movie, however, which also came in under expectations, the Ninjago movie had a much smaller target audience than, say, the LEGO movie. Critics gave it a 51% score, and audiences gave it a B-plus cinema score, which is lower than the A and A-minus from the previous films. In second is last week's winner, It, adding $29.8 million to a total of $266.1 million. And picking up first this week is Kingsman, The Golden Circle, debuting to $39 million. In a rare move, that's higher than the original film's premiere, but the industry is left wondering if that's just a bump for expectations' sake. The first film was well received by critics, earning a 74%, versus this film's 50 Audiences were less discerning, giving each entry in this franchise a B+. To close out the box office report, let's take a look at the past. Five years ago in 2012, Hotel Transylvania took number one with $42.5 million. 
Hotel Transylvania broke Sweet Home Alabama's record for the highest weekend debut in September. Ten years ago in 2007, The Game Plan won the weekend with $23 million. Twenty years ago in 1997, The Peacemaker was the winner with $12.3 million. Thirty years ago in 1987, Fatal Attraction took the title for a second week with $7.7 million. And 40 years ago, in 1977, Star Wars won the box office crown with $3 million, making this the ninth time in 18 weeks. The box office premieres for September 29th are taking on Spies with Tom Cruise. This week's headliner is American Made. An action thriller starring Tom Cruise, Domhnall Gleeson, and Sarah Wright. I don't work for TWA no more. Are you going to prison? No, ma'am. You gotta take care of this family. Because I will take the kids, I will go right back to working for Kentucky Fried Chicken. Lose what I'm working on. Barry, it's, I am six months pregnant. It's top secret. I need a fridge. I need beds for our children. I need a stove. Washing machine over there. Let me just. Is this all legal? All right. What I'm about to tell you. Now you 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 gotta swear you can't ever tell anybody this, Lucy. All right. A pilot lands work for the CIA and as a drug runner in the South during the 1980s. American Made is rated R. Number two on the list is Flatliners, a sci-fi thriller starring Ellen Page, Diego Luna, and Nina Dobrev. Do you have plans tonight? Do you want to have fun with me later? Courtney Holmes, I am mildly surprised, but offer accepted. Midnight basement, sub-level C. What's going on? I would like you to stop my heart. You give it one minute, and then you bring me back. Okay, now's the point where you say it's all a joke. Five medical students, obsessed by what lies beyond the confines of life, embark on a daring experiment. By stopping their hearts for short periods, each triggers a near-death experience, giving them a first-hand account of the afterlife. I feel like I've seen this movie before. Maybe with Kiefer Sutherland. And Kevin Bacon. Everything's better with Bacon. Flatliners is rated PG-13. Number three on our list is Till Death Do Us Part. A thriller starring Tay Diggs, Annie Alonza, and Malik Yoba. I work very hard to provide this life, Madison. I pay the bills. I provide everything. Is that not good enough? Yeah, for you, it's good enough. What about what I want? What about me? What about what I want? This is ridiculously selfish of you. Again, you need to watch your tone. You are such a coward. You are a coward. You are a liar. Don't okay me. Calm down. I'm not going to calm down. Do not tell me to calm down. I do everything for you. I do everything. I quit my job for you. I sit here and I cook and I clean. I love my father for you. I treat you like a king. As you should. As you should. That is your job. Be a wife. As your husband, I deserve more respect than you're showing me right now. You are not my husband. Michael and Madison Rowland had planned to spend the rest of their lives together until one day Michael's controlling ways turned their perfect marriage. With the help of her best friend, Madison decides to get away. After adopting a new identity, she meets Alex Stone and learns to love again, and all is well until Michael discovers Madison's whereabouts and then recreates the nightmares she once lived all over again. Till Death to Us Part is rated PG-13. And the last title on this part of the list is A Question of Faith, 
a Christian drama starring Richard T. Jones, Kim Fields, and C. Thomas Howell. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. What have I told you about texting and driving? She's fighting for her life. When tragedy strikes three families, their destiny forces them on a converging path to discover God's love, grace, and mercy, as the challenges of their fate could also resurrect their beliefs. A Question of Faith is rated PG. There are also eight titles on the limited slate this week, and you can find those in the show notes. Next up is a look at the home entertainment slate for the week of September 26th, and I'll begin with new release on DVD and Blu-ray, and that list kicks off with Transformers, The Last Night, a fantasy action film starring Mark Wahlberg, Anthony Hopkins, and Josh Duhamel. Optimus Prime discovers that his home planet, Cybertron, is now a dead planet, which he comes to find he was responsible for killing. He finds a way to bring the planet back to life, but in order to do so, he needs an artifact, and that artifact is conveniently on Earth. Transformers The Last Night is rated PG-13. The second new release this week is 47 Meters Down, a thriller starring Mandy Moore, Claire Holt, and Matthew Modine. Two sisters on Mexican vacation are trapped in a shark observation cage at the bottom of the ocean. With oxygen running low and great white circling nearby, they have less than an hour of air left to figure out how to get to the surface. 47 meters down is rated PG-13. Swinging by new releases on digital video, there's one title to share, and that one is Spider-Man Homecoming. The Return of the Web Crawler to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, starring Tom Holland, Michael Keaton, and Marissa Tomei. Following the events of Captain America Civil War, Peter Parker attempts to balance his life in high school with his career as the web slinging superhero Spider Man. Spider Man Homecoming is rated PG 13. Moving right along to TV on DVD and Blu-ray, start things there with Shameless Season 7 from 2017, starring William H. Macy, Emmy Rossum, and Cameron Monaghan. As the seventh season of Shameless kicks off, Frank wakes up from a month-long coma after having been tossed into the Chicago River, only to realize that no one came looking for him at the hospital. (laughs) That's love. Fiona, who still works at Patsy's Pies as the manager, is faced with making major executive decisions in order to keep the business afloat. Lip is out of rehab but struggles with his sobriety. Ian and Caleb hit a major snag in their relationship after Caleb is caught cheating. Debbie, now a single teen mom, begins stealing high-end strollers in order to pay a nanny to care for her baby. And Carl chooses to get circumcised while Kevin, Veronica, and Svetlana consider opening a topless maid service. The second TV title is Longmire, Season 5 from 2016, starring Robert Taylor, Katie Sackhoff, and Lou Diamond Phillips. Based on the Walt Longmire mystery novels by Craig Johnson, contemporary crime thriller Longmire returns to Absaroka County for Season 5, with Sheriff Walt Longmire in the crosshairs of a wrongful death civil suit by Barlow Connolly's estate. 
with his best friend Henry Standing Bear and daughter Katie working for his nemesis Jacob Nighthorse and new mysteries and cases weighing down Walt and his team of deputies Vic Moretti and The Verg, the noble but stubborn Wyoming sheriff doubles down on his own self-reliance. And that just might be his downfall. Number three on our list is a doubleheader. It's Sleepy Hollow Season 4 from 2016 and Sleepy Hollow, the complete series, spanning 2013 to 2017 and starring Tom Meeson, Lindy Greenwood, and Nicole Bahari. Following a 250-year slumber, Ichabod Crane devotes his life and knowledge of the supernatural to defeating the demonic forces that plague present-day Sleepy Hollow. But after the climactic events of Season 3 and the death of his partner and fellow witness Abby Mills, Crane's world is turned upside down. He is then led out of town by a mysterious group promising to put him in charge of an evil fighting organization created hundreds of years ago by none other than George Washington. Crane now finds himself in an all-new city, working with all-new allies, as he embarks on his most important mission yet, to save Washington, D.C., from otherworldly threats that promised harm not only to the United States and its people, but to the soul of democracy itself. The fourth title is Taken, Season 1 from 2016, starring Clive Standen, Gaius Charles, and Brooklyn Sudano. An action-packed prequel to the international blockbuster Taken franchise, this series stars Clive Standen as Brian Mills, a younger, hungrier version of the iconic character played by Liam Neeson in the films. A former Green Beret, Mills becomes swept up in a quest for vengeance after he fails to protect one of those closest to him. Recruited to join a group of CIA operatives, Mills begins to hone his deadly skill set as he dives headfirst into dangerous missions that test his courage and push him to the edge.
And our final TV title this week is The Greatest American Hero, The Complete Series, spanning 1981 to 1983 and starring William Catt, Connie Selica, and Robert Culp. This nine DVD collector set includes all 43 episodes of this quirky, Emmy-nominated sci-fi action comedy series created by legendary writer and producer Stephen J. Cannell. William Catt stars as Ralph Hinckley, an ordinary school teacher who becomes extraordinary after an encounter with extraterrestrials that leaves him with a red power suit that transforms him into a superhero. But when he loses the suit's instruction manual, Ralph must learn by trial and error to control the capabilities and powers of his magic suit to fight the battle against injustice and crime. With the help of his attorney girlfriend, Pam Davison, and FBI agent Bill Maxwell, the world's most unlikely flying crime fighter gets tangled in one outrageous adventure after another. I'll wrap up the Home Entertainment slate with Blue Race from the past, and this week I bring two titles to share. The first one is Flatliners, a drama thriller from 1990 that, hey, it is being remade this week, starring Kiefer Sutherland, Julia Roberts, and Kevin Bacon. I told you it was Kevin Bacon. An ambitious, charismatic medical student persuades his classmates to take part in a reckless experiment to see if there is life after death they will kill themselves, temporarily shut down or flatline their heart and brain function to briefly experience clinical death. Their horror begins when they realize that although they've come back alive, they haven't come back alone. Flatliners is rated R. The other Blu-ray from the past this week is Space Camp, a light-hearted family adventure film from 1986 starring Kate Capshaw, Leah Thompson, and Kelly Preston. That's like the 80s encapsulated right there in one cast. The young attendees of a space camp find themselves in space for real when their space shuttle is accidentally launched into orbit. Space Camp is rated PG. After this brief break for about a shameless podcast cross promotion, the Weekly Podioplex will continue. The kids of the 70s and 80s are all grown up, but the good times of childhood don't have to end. Our generation can share the fun and fandom of our youth with the next generation and bring the past into the future. And wrap it all up to make a fantastic present. Join Jedi Schwa and Shaz Bazaar every Monday morning to get your work week started by reminiscing about the past and exploring the future with your earbuds on Techno Retro Dads. Techno Retro Dads. Timeless television. Battlestar Galactic. Roger. Great games. Monopoly. Atari. Classic cartoons. Bugs Bunny. Muppet Baby. Arcade action. Wow. The Lazy Book Club. Ready Player One. Holiday specials. Toys in the Attic. Family Circles. Watching movies. Education. History. Science Project. With news and reviews. It's 77 minutes of fun and fandom with your earbuds every Monday morning. 12 reasons to check out Techno Retro Dads on the Shot Class Digital Network. Make your Monday mornings count by tuning in to Techno Retro Dads through iTunes or find us at technoretrodads.com. And welcome back to the Weekly Podioplex. I'm Denise with your Quick Flicks.
First up, Ron Howard is teasing the spice mines of Kessel in the new Han Solo movie. After the firing of Phil Lord and Chris Miller, Ron Howard quickly came aboard the second Star Wars standalone film to help write its course. Ever since he joined, Howard has tried to fix the narrative surrounding the project by releasing pictures almost daily of what is happening from the set. This antic has brought some nice tidbits of information along the way, and it looks like the famed Kessel Run may actually make an appearance. Howard posted the latest picture on Twitter. It showed a rocky hallway ending in an elevator shaft that definitely has that deep, dark mine feel to it. His caption was simple, only saying, spicy? Which, I mean, come on, if that isn't a hint, I don't know what is. So, question is, are we going to see the Kessel Run? Is Lucasfilm going to admit that a parsec is a measure of distance and not time? Did Han Solo lie about the Millennium Falcon's top speed? Importantly, is Darth Vader going to make an appearance in the movie? That one I can answer, and the answer is yes, Darth Vader will appear in the Han Solo movie. We all know Chris Miller and Phil Lord got cut from the team and that Ron Howard stepped in to finish what was begun. He has reportedly reshot a good chunk of the film and has made several changes to Lord and Miller's vision of the film in the process. And one such change involved bringing Paul Bettany into the fold, and another is bringing back Big Batty Vader. That hashtag show is reporting that Darth Vader has been present on the scent of Han Solo. There are no details on who is portraying the character yet, but it's believed that it is not Rogue One actor Spencer Wildling, who sparked the rumors of Vader appearing in the film earlier this year. Does anyone else get the feeling that Vader's inclusion was planned? Is it just me? Once again, I am leaving you, dear listeners, with a speculation and questions as to why Darth Vader is going to make an appearance in the film. I don't know, but we'll get some kind of hint when the trailers drop. Up next, Overwatch developer Update aims to tackle in-game toxicity. There's always some yutz out there who wants to ruin everyone's fun. And as video games continue to grow in popularity and their associated fandoms in size, the cockroaches are going to come out of the woodwork in force. In response to this, Jeff Kaplan, one of the leads on the Overwatch team, has released another developer update that explains how Blizzard plans to tackle toxic players in their game. In the update, Kaplan goes over how to deal with these players from the user's perspective, what the team plans on doing about it, and how they don't want those players creating a poor environment for the community at all. In gaming, there are a multitude of toxic players out there, from those jerks in Magic the Gathering who, when it looks like they're losing, completely throw the game to keep their ranks high. And never mind those guys on MMOs who purposely get their players killed, or those who will find ways to kick their opponents out of the game by messing with their connection and thereby ruining matches. Outside that, there's the abusive language and threats. Firstly, Kaplan urges everyone to use the report feature on their respective platforms. He addresses the option to have a server dedicated to toxic players, but has decided that those with bad intentions only deserve to be banned from the game entirely. There are currently automated punishments in place for those who leave competitive games early, but expect those punishments to grow harsher in the future. Overwatch's philosophy is simple. If you are a bad person, we don't want you playing Overwatch. And here's hoping more game developers will follow Kaplan's lead when it comes to toxic players. Next, Jordan Peele is developing a 1970s Nazi hunting TV series. It's called The Hunt. Earlier this year, Peele, who was previously known for his comedic chops in shows like Key and Peele and the film Keanu, took the world by storm with his directorial debut, Get Out. The horror thriller was not only critically acclaimed, but also raked in the cash, grossing over $250 million US dollars worldwide with a $4.5 million budget. Since Get Out, all eyes have been on peel as people eagerly await the announcement of his next project. The hunt could turn out to be exactly what we've been waiting for. Together with Monkey Paw Productions, Sonar Entertainment is attached to produce the series. And according to THR, the idea started floating around the industry following the Charlottesville neo-Nazi protests that took place recently. Set in the 70s, the hunt follows a group of Nazi hunters as they set out on a quest to track down Nazis who, with the help of the U.S. government, have managed to escape justice and instill themselves in American society. In superhero news, HBO has officially ordered a Watchmen TV series pilot. Please tell me Zack Snyder isn't attached to it. The seminal graphic novel is set in an alternate reality where the presence of superheroes swing the outcome of the Vietnam War. Watchmen was a dark, revolutionary deconstruction of superhero stories, showcasing deeply flawed heroes grappling with their personal demons and the escalation of the Cold War. HBO has been attempting to adapt the story into an ongoing series for a few years now, and it looks like they may have finally cracked the code. Per Variety, the network is officially ordering a Watchmen pilot as well as additional scripts should the pilot be ordered to series. 
As it has been rumored for a while now, writer-producer Damon Lindelhoff will mastermind the Watchmen adaptation. Thank God it isn't Zack Snyder. Also, while we're at it, can we do an HBO series of Sucker Punch? Because that one actually had some potential. It just didn't have a story with a coherent message after the fact. And finally, Doug Lehman wants Edge of Tomorrow rebranded as Live, Die, Repeat. Look, the only Tom Cruise movie I actually like. Also, the book was amazing. If you haven't read it, I suggest you do so. It's a short read, but it's well worth the effort. The director of Edge of Tomorrow wants the film rebranded with the title Live, Die, Repeat so that the sequel Live, Die, Repeat and Repeat will be in line with its predecessor. Wait, there's a sequel? Since when? More importantly, why? The director also offers vague details on the time travel aspect of the upcoming film. Okay. Initially titled All You Need Is Kill, the 2014 science fiction film starring Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt was based off a Japanese book of the same name. In 2013, Warner Brothers decided to change the title to Edge of Tomorrow, though the film's director, Doug Lehman, fought hard with the film to be titled Live, Die, Repeat. He lost that battle, and the movie lost at the box office. It was released on home media with Live, Die, Repeat featured prominently. A sequel was later announced, and in May, Lehman revealed that the film's title would be Live, Die, Repeat, and Repeat, ergo the rebranding issue. He said, I'm hoping to rebrand it fully as Live, Die, Repeat, and the sequel will be inspired from that, whether it's Live, Die, Repeat, and Repeat or something else. Tom and I make movies for the long term, and I really think about getting the title settled for posterity. He also discussed the film's plot and confirmed that it will take place where the last one left off and that it will go backward in time from that moment. Apparently, the sequel is going to make complete sense of the first movie's ending. Well, it will if they don't let Tom into the writer's room. And that's it for this week's Quick Licks. I'll see you guys next time on the Weekly Podioplex. Thank you, Denise. And here we are once again at the end of a new edition of the Weekly Podioplex. If you want to discuss anything you heard on this week's edition, we would love to hear from you. You can surf on over to the Chronic Rift homepage at chronicrift.com and leave an audio message right there on the website using your microphone. You can also write an email or send an MP3 to weeklypodioplex at gmail.com. If 140 characters, or I guess it's now 280 characters or less is more your thing, you can still tweet us on Twitter. The Chronic Rift is chronic underscore rift. The Weekly Podioplex is Weekly Podioplex. Denise is Riley James Keith. And I am Womprat99, like the creature Luke with Bullseye in his T16 in Beggar's Canyon. You can give the Chronic Rift a thumbs up on Stitcher Radio, leave us a review on iTunes, and you can find the Weekly Podioplex and the Chronic Rift on Facebook. The usual disclaimer applies, of course, if you leave us feedback. You may hear your words on a future edition of the Weekly Podioplex. Take a moment, stop on by, and see what the shows the Chronic Rift Network has to offer. We have the Batcave Podcast, the OSI Files Podcast, the G2V Podcast, Generations Geek, presenting the transcription feature, the Dan and Travis Show, the Sci-Fi Diner Podcast, Doctor Who and Mr. Drew, the Home Game Show Version Podcast, and so much more. If you have a Roku player, you can treat it like a time machine and find us there on the Chronic Rifts Roku channel, which houses episodes of the Chronic Rifts Adventures of the 1990s when it was a public access television show on the New York City airwaves. Check us out. You'll find the culture in pop culture. If you're interested in more of my adventures, take a quick trip to my blog, Creative Criticality, where I'm watching every episode of Doctor Who for the first time from the very beginning of that franchise and reviewing those stories in the Timestamps Project. Right now, the blog is in the middle of the 20th season. In fact, I just wrapped up the Black Guardian trilogy with Enlightenment, and I'm rapidly moving my way toward the Five Doctors. And those reviews can be found at creativecriticality.wordpress.com. You can also find Creative Criticality on Facebook. Denise can also be found on the internet at Accessories Not Included, where she talks about her writing, reviews books, and offers her services as a cover designer. Check her out at AccessoriesNotIncluded.com. If you decide to pick up any of this week's new releases, why not do it through our Amazon store? You get the newest entertainment on Amazon's low prices and high-quality service, and each purchase you make that store supports the Chronic Rift Network. Your support keeps us on the air, and we appreciate your consideration. Look for the links to our best bets and the network store in our show notes, or click the Amazon box on the website. 
The Weekly Patio Plex is a Lucky Shot production and is produced by John S. Drew. On behalf of Denise and John, this is Michael Faulkner. Thanks for listening. Until next time, there are adventures and drama, comedy and action, worlds to explore in the depths of film. Get some popcorn, find your favorite seat, and I'll see you at the theater. That's a wrap.